Well, the music seemed to fit where we're going. We're headed to Mexico. Grab your sombrero and let's go. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be, my fellow sim aviators or real world aviators, pilot enthusiasts. You just want to come along for the flight. You're just a passenger. Hey, you're a VIP here. All right, we are. We made it as far as uh, from Colorado Springs down to Denver, Texas. I didn't even know there was such thing as a Denver, Texas. I do now. All right, get my uh, scene switcher on here. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so we are in. Uh, Denver, Texas, and I've been looking at maps, and there are no pyramids close by. Well, the original intention was let's fly to Mexico, eat some tamales, and uh, let that be the extent of it. And I'm like, well, you know, they have pyramids down there. So I've been trying to find maps of different ones, and basically they all seem to be located in the midpoint or going south, so a lot of miles to traverse to get to there. But it does seem like some might be a little bit closer. So either way, never really explored uh, Mexico. Also need to make some money today in NeoFly. Let me pause that again. So let's get a job that starts taking us south again. This one looks pretty good, actually. That one's taking us... We want to come down here anyway. But there might be some ruins over here near Monterey. Oh, there might be something. Either way, we'll, we'll fly this way. Okay, so we'll come down and then see if we can get another job going into Mexico. And then most of them seem to be located down here uh, near Mexico City. Like Tijuanaco or Temple of the Sun, all that stuff is over here somewhere. That'll be an adventure in itself trying to find these. It gets actually, now that I'm looking at different things, it starts getting really exciting. Pyramid hunting and ancient ruin hunting. Once you get down into here, start going into Guatemala. These are all places I've never really flown. I mean, I've like loaded in to like try to go see the Nazca lines when it first released. I haven't been back since. I am very, very surprised. And it's probably a conspiracy theory. I love good conspiracies. I think uh, it's surprising and everything just kind of cuts off as we go into the North North America, into the United States. It's like, where are all the ruins and pyramids here? There are pyramids all over the world. There's ancient ruins everywhere. But all of a sudden, all this region around here from Mexico City up, really? There's not a whole lot going on here. And then as we go into the United States, really? No pyramids? It's got to be a conspiracy. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and take this job out of Denver, Texas, and head down here towards Acuna. Let's see where what, where this is taking us. Let's see if there's actually a, a, a strip there. All right. Yeah, there's a oh, Carta Valley Cemetery. They have text on the runway. RBR. Yeah, why not? Let's. Oh, what's it telling us? Can't take a new job with the engine running. Yeah, that is one thing about um, NeoFly. It's all right. In the caravan, all you got to do is grab your. Conditioner and bring it all the way down. Not the hair conditioner, the conditioner knob here. Same with your prop, bring it all the way down. And that'll slow the plane propeller down just enough to where NeoFly thinks that the, the plane is fully off. I mean, it kind of is. 
can usually just start it back up again. Actually, in this case, we might not be able to. Normally, you could just bring them down and uh, they'll go into a low state. Come on, you. What was this? Two... Two TA9. Ooh, let's see if we can get it now. There we go. Alright, so we'll take that one down to Carter Valley Cemetery. Greetings from the tower. We have a number of passengers that need assistance to board. Ooh, we're Please taking passengers to a cemetery. To oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's nice and clean in here. You know, in the imaginary version. From dispatch. Boarding passenger. Please stand by. You know, I'm always talking about my imaginary version of this. I would love to be able to redo the interior to where it's couches. Couches and uh, a bar back here. Maybe some, uh, you know, a, 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 cook, a small little cook station. I'd like to turn this thing into more like an RV. I mean, you still got all your cargo outside and underneath that you can put. I'd like to make this a lot more homey on the inside here. All right, we've got our passenger and we've got a job now. Transporter from dispatch. All passengers on board. You can ask for the clearance to take off. Already got it. Okay. Mission are back to full, prop to full. Flip this switch over here and we'll get the engine uh, belt to start it again. Get rid of that annoying bing noise. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Okay. So, let me plug this into our GPS now and at least get a direct to. And we're going to... Two T A nine. Two T A nine. Valverde Park. Let's see if we got the right thing here. Check our map. That looks about right. That's the direction we wanted to go. Um, zoom in instead of out, dummy. Yep. That's exactly where we want to go. And then we'll start making our way. We'll go over towards Monterey and see what we can see over there. And keep making our way down towards Mexico City. But we'll be in Mexico soon. We'll make a stop and at least immediately grab some, some good tamales good tacos just good food in general right i did bring some water tablets but, you know okay so we get that plugged in let me get us an altitude on our deck here we are set to what zero all right We go ahead and just set in the 6,000 oh, uh, 6, feet, but let's go over to Sky Vector real quick. And let's update what we got going on here. We're at E57. Two TA9. Okay, two TA9. So there's our route. Uh, 100 and no, 219 miles. But as we zoom down here, the dark blue letters, numbers, <laughs> the dark blue numbers, as we come down, show us elevation. So 6,000, we're totally clear all the way down through here. Three, four, three, five, a pumping station. Andrews, Andrews County, 3,400. We head towards Midland, 42. Some radio towers or TV towers, K Mid TV. 
will be there there's gonna be a nice golf course over here a tank farm what does that mean tank farm 3240 feet here midland international and spaceport that's right by that it'll be a nice thing to see 3000 Still 3.7, having no little peaks or mountains popping up. 3,000. Going down here, 2,000. 2.8. All right, so 6,000 feet, we might be good the entire way there, and that's, I'd be good at five. That way we can still have a nice look at the terrain as we're moving around, yeah. Bring it down then, let's go to, uh, Go to five. And we're heading south, so it would be evens. Find that. All right. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day. Yeah, it's, it was loud. Have a great flight. It's a beautiful time to fly. Well, thank you. And on our autopilot, do a flight level change and turn on nav. It doesn't kick in, your nav doesn't kick in, do another direct two. There we go. Altimeter 3008. Your altimeter knob is right here. It's actually part, it's built into this knob here. And the setting is here. Rotate that to 3008. This is probably the most important knob in the entire plane and doesn't get enough attention. This is like the life and death knob sometimes. Especially if we can't see what's going on out there. Seminole Spring Service. It really is pretty down here. I thought it was going to be, you know, a lot more monochromatic. You know, think about these Mexican westerns and Texas westerns, and it just seems so dang dusty. Maybe at one point in time it was, but this is awful colorful. Doesn't seem right. Are we not logged in? Are oh, we logged in?
Xbox logged in. Here we go. Now we're tracking. Following Texas 214. Word Kick back and relax. The plane is yours as far as what's in the back. Make yourself at home. Have a snack. Have a drink. Have a couple of drinks. Whatever you need to do, just have a good time. And enjoy your flight on in airways today. Where did my chat go? Is it chat? She disappeared. Store chat. Pop out chat. There it is. like they had all these development plans going on out here a lot of these maps are I mean there's still a lot of neighborhood stuff going on out here but you see a lot of plots that are in development and again this is probably like five to ten years ago so this is probably way built up now we really need to get updated maps and why they do it I don't know national security I'm not really sure Who knows? I would like real time. I'm weird that way. I want a subscription. <laughs> hey, it's 19 minutes after the hour. I'll hold my idea for a minute.
Got some flooding on that road over there. Ah, and a little airport here. Games counted. All right, we'll pause the music right there. It is 20 minutes after the hour. Smoke if you got them. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. So we're in just passing Gaines County, Texas. And we're on our way to Mexico to go have some virtual tamales in our head. And uh, go look for possibly any ruins or pyramids or anything. I've never really done too much exploring down to Mexico way. Are we going down? Are we... Really? We're stalling and losing our altitude. Hello, mouse. Get back to the simulator. What's going on? What is going on? Turn off the autopilot first. Uh oh, we're losing power. Oops. That's not the view I want when I'm losing power. Okay, throttle's full up. Oh, I don't want to land on the water. Don't want to hit a house. Might be close. Dispatch to pilot. That looked like a butter smooth landing from here. Really? Please exit the runway and taxi to parking. Really? What Contact happened with our plane? For your parking assignment, then shut down your engine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> no, I don't believe we're at our destination. No, we're far from it, but they want to pay us anyway. <clears throat> How interesting. What is going on with the plane? We just... Transporter from dispatch. Everyone is on board. Let's go. Uh, we have full throttle. The flaps are up. Conditioner's on. The prop is up. All of a sudden, we just lost all power and started coming down. It wouldn't maintain altitude and came down hmm baba if we can uh, taxi over to this road no and now I've got really no power wow what an unexpected thing to happen at least I didn't crash us and kill us and our virtual passengers that were taken to this whatever location. All right, let me try a shift R. See if that'll re repair anything. Do, 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 do. Maybe it didn't like the music? I don't know. Props up again. Throttle's working. Shouldn't be a How interesting. Well, if they want to pay us, let's get paid and let's get our plane. We're going to have to set this like transport ourselves in Neofly over to Gaines, that airport that was just back behind us a little ways. So in the real world, yeah, we'd have to get a tow over there and get our problem worked out, whatever it is. Oh, interesting, folks. Uh, I don't know. Can't explain it. Let's see what Neofly does here.
So Neofly isn't, uh, they're not paying us. Thing triggered there. All right, so the airport. We'll go back to the main menu and we'll spawn in at gains. Man, didn't even get to enjoy my smoke break. I'm just glad I didn't kill us. Okay, so we want Gaines County. Let me look up what airport that is. Get over sky back there. Where we took off from. Traveling all over that wonderful orange. Past that, this is where we're at. We're on the ground somewhere right over here. All right. Let's spawn. Interesting how they've got the, the runways joined like that. I know it's going to be a good day when my favorite pilot is working. Now, Neofly still shows that we have the job. Greetings from the tower. We have a number of passengers that need assistance to board. Please confirm you are ready to receive them. So it's going to load the passengers again. Pilot from dispatch. Boarding passenger. Please stand by. GTA 9. Transporter from dispatch. Everyone is on board. Let's oh my gosh, you know what it was? Es como si fuera yoga, estamos bien posicionados. Pura movidas pesadas, pesan como una ballena. Oh, I've got to take this call. Hello. Hey.
an important call. Sorry I didn't put up my Be Right Back screen. I've been waiting for this call for a long time. And so for it to catch me right then and there, I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss it. You know, I've got my headphones on and I'm doing all this stuff over here and we're dealing with this and then we're dealing with that. And I look over and it's the call I've been waiting for and so I just immediately had to grab it, throw the headphones off and hey, so I am so sorry for the inconvenience of you just sitting there staring at the neofly screen yeah. all right so we should be loaded up and grab my headphones get myself situated in front of my desk again here man but but that was good it was good i'm glad i got that taken care of been waiting for that one a while you're just tuning in we are trying to make our way to mexico oh and right before i left let me stop the music here Guess what it was, folks? A, a huge mistake, and it was my fault. The computer had, there was nothing wrong with the computer. The simulator didn't suddenly freak out. Yours truly made a rookie, rookie mistake. I didn't check the fuel. 
I knew when we landed in Denver that we were, and I made a, a mention of it. I'm like, man, we made it here with just a, a little bit of fuel, or at least I noted that when we landed yesterday. I'm how did the plane just suddenly fall out of the sky? Yeah, no fuel. So when we were taking off, I got everything set up, but forgot to check the fuel. So that uh, sudden almost crash there, that was entirely my fault. Okay, so let's go back over to our hangar. We have we are now are at KGNC, and we need to put fuel in. Ah, oh, that binging noise. And you've been sitting there listening to that binging noise probably the whole time, too. I'm so sorry. Everything is going so good until it isn't. Yep. Well, I'm glad I, I, you know, I remember that it was a fuel thing and realized it was my own fault. I didn't want to sit here and say, this stupid simulator, you know what's wrong. My fault. Per usual. Okay. So, uh, we're at gains. Get this out of the way we're set still uh no we're not still have to go to uta 9 what we're doing when the call came in uh we're still set to no, we're not. We're out. Let's get that reset. Man. All right. Yeah, I was having a little too much fun, I think.
All right, back on track. Oh, we're going to join K. Altimeter 3013. I'm spinning this big knob here and looking at this 3013. The, um, AI is handling the radios, but if you're not familiar with the glass cockpit, communication radio, COM1 and COM2 are over here. These are the knobs for that. Our nav radios, nav1 and nav2, right here. Switch button. Let me uh, go grab that bush talk radio again. Let's see if there's anything coming up that would be a sightseeing. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing until here. Kind of headed that way. Rescue of Jessica McClure. I don't know what that is about. Got Odessa and Andrews, Texas coming up. Let's see here. All right. It says Andrews is the county seat of Andrews County in the Permian, Permian, Permian Basin of West Texas. Andrews sits near the far southwest within the Texas Panhandle's plains, about 30 miles east of New Mexico. Andrews was incorporated on February 2nd, 1937. Both the city and the county were named for Richard Andrews, the first Texan soldier to die in the Texas Revolution. Popular, uh, population was 13,487 as of 2020, and that's where we're coming up on uh, here in a moment. And then beyond that, Odessa is coming up. And it says... Odessa is a city in and the county seat of Hector County, Texas. United States. It's located primarily in Ector County, although a small section of the city extends into Midland County. Odessa's population was 114,428 at the 2020 census, making it the 28th most populous city in Texas. It's the principal city of the Odessa Metropolitan Statistical Area, which includes all of Ector County. The metropolitan area is also a component of the larger Midland Odessa combined statistical area, which had a 2020 census population of 359,001. City is famous for being featured in the book Friday Night Lights. A town, a team, a dream in the movie adaptation Friday Night Lights. In 1948, Odessa was the home of First Lady Barbara Bush and the one-time home of the former presidents George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush. Former President George H. Bush has been quoted as saying, At Odessa, we became Texans and proud of it. Odessa was founded in 1881 as a water stop and cattle shipping point on the Texas and Pacific Railway. The first post office opened in 1885, but it became the county seat of Ector County in 1891 when the county was first organized. It was incorporated as a city in 1927. After oil was discovered in Ector County on the Connell Ranch, southeast, sorry, southwest of Odessa, Odessa said to have been named after Odessa, Ukraine, historically spelled Odessa because the local short grass spray resembles the Ukraine's steep landscape. The opening of the Penn Field in 1929 and the Cowden Field in 1930, oil became a major draw for new residents. In 1925, the population was just 750. By 1929, it had risen to 5,000. For the rest of the 20th century, the city's population and economy grew rapidly during each of a succession of oil booms. 
roughly in the 1930s, 50s, 70s, 2010s, often with the company contractions during the succeeding bus, particularly in the 1960s and 80s. Typical desert climate. Summers are hot and sunny, while winters are mild and dry. Most rainfall occurs late in spring and summer. Snowfall is rare. The area exhibits a large diurnal temperature range and frequent high winds. You can see some winds kicking up some dust over here. Clouds ahead of us. So, going back to Bush Talk to show you where we're at. Okay. We're, we're passing Andrews right now. So Andrews is over here. Again, these maps are old, but you can see, look at all of the uh, the development that was going on. I don't know. This could be five, ten years ago. So I'm sure this is all filled in by now. IMO. All of this. Look at all these residences that they were planning. All these plots that they've got plotted. My goodness. And if they have it, man, they head down there and do some oil drilling. It looks like we've got flaps up still. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And pull back on the throttle just a touch. More of a cruise. Try to conserve some of that fuel. Oh, they don't need it. Full RPM on the prop. Maybe the engine a little bit today. Oh, I'm so happy I didn't do any hull damage. I didn't. I did a little bit. Nine four seven eight nine nine. Did like five points of hull damage on that, and a couple of points on the engine too. So not too bad. And I'm just happy I brought us down without. Hurting us with our, our imaginary uh, passenger here. Okay, so we're here passing Andrews and Odessa. Midland is over here. But we're heading more towards Midland than Odessa. All right, well, let me pull up Midland then. Got the wiki. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Population was 134, 132,512 as of the 2020 census. Midland was founded as the midway point between Fort Worth and El Paso, Texas on the Texas and Pacific Railroad in 1881. The city has many connections to the Bush family. It was the one-time home of former President George W. Bush, former First Lady Laura Bush. The George W. Bush childhood home is located in Midland. Midland was changed significantly by the discovery of oil in the Permian Basin in 1923 when the Santa Rita number 1 well began producing in Reagan County followed shortly by the Yates oil field in Iran. Yeah, we have an Iran, Texas, huh? Midland became the West Texas Oil Fields Administrative Center during World War II at the nation's largest bombardier, bombardier training base. Second boot began after the war with the discovery and development of Sprayberry Trend. Development of the Spray Sprawberry Trend. Still the county's third largest oil field by total reserves. Yet another boom 
period took place during the 1970s high oil prices associated with the oil and energy crisis there is no oil and energy crisis in my opinion in my opinion i believe that the oil thing is a conspiracy i really really do i believe there's oil everywhere 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 it's not a it's not a limited fossil fuel thing it's an earth thing it produces it and it produces it abundantly everywhere got a drill that's it that ah, what do i know their economy still relies heavily on petroleum dun, 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 dun. all right as we look out the window yeah high winds dusty what are our winds anyway that's only a three knot wind are they singing about tamales that's why we're going to mexico we want some tamales Nah, she's thinking about take the money and run. Hundred and Take the tamales and run. Money ain't so bad. Laid out so logically.
I just say in the chat there? Skyvector.com. I hope you're still there. Hop a hop. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see you. Got a busy sight singing and all stuff. Yes. Skyvector.com. Yes. Any airport you want. In North America. I mean, if you're looking for Europe, you're going to have to find something else. But for North America and most places, and all you got to do is right click on any pin for airport. Well, let me find a, a bigger airport. And then hover. Well, you hover over the airport, you'll get the. Um, You'll get all the information for each airport. I'm just gonna try to find a big one here where it'll have all the charts. All right, so look at this airport here. The airport diagram, all the VOR approaches, the RNAV approaches. So all your SIDS and STARS charts are available. Just generally, everyone comes with an airport diagram. But again, if you want the charts themselves, here's all the... Uh, and these all match up pretty, pretty, pretty good with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Really, really well for SIDS and STARS. NDB approach. So skyvector.com is an amazing, amazing website, and it's free, and um, there used to be a plug-in, so you could have a moving map for, for Skyvector, and it updates in real time, for example, things that are going on in the area, like this here. They don't want you flying in this security zone from certain dates and it's valid for two days so anything going on the sky vector is still updating in real time as to real world uh things that are going on notices to airmen oh there's some thicker roads down there now pretty pretty dusty around here right at the moment if you're just tuning in we're making our way another cross country we're heading down to Mexico the initial idea was for some virtual tamales and now I'm thinking I'm gonna try to see if we can find some pyramids and we're currently making our way from Denver, Texas, down to this point. Now, this is going to be interesting, too. I was talking about needing more um, flight data. As we go into Mexico, we don't got a whole lot of sky vector data. We still uh, get some airport information. But as you can see, at the border, all the detail kind of cuts off. But we have enough information to get to the major airports, and we're going to be make making our way down here towards Mexico City. Hopefully the weather clears up and it's not so dusty as we go forward. Well, hopefully we come out of it. Pretty much just pea soup right at the moment. And we still have 143 nautical miles to our destination 
So kick back and relax. Open up the coffee. Have a smoke. Open the window if you want. Make yourself at home. Not going to be much to see until we get out of this. Turn up the music. I was going to say, it looks like it's thinning out, but then I look out on the horizon and I still see the big line of clouds. You know what? We missed this back here. We didn't exactly get close enough to it, I guess, for it to trigger. Let me play this here. I wanted to hear it anyway. The rescue of the rescue of Jessica McClure. Jessica McClure Morales, born March 26, 1986, widely known as Baby Jessica, in 1987, mm, okay. fell into a well in her aunt's backyard in Midland, Texas on October 14, 1987, at the age of 18 months. Over the next 56 hours, rescuers worked to free her from the 8-inch well casing, about 22 feet below grade. The story garnered worldwide attention. A 1989 ABC television movie was made about the events, Everybody's Baby, The Rescue of Jessica McClure. Rescue the incident occurred in Midland, Texas, where firemen and police developed a plan to drill a parallel shaft to the well where Jessica was lodged and drill another horizontal cross tunnel to rescue her. 
Enlisting the help of local oil drillers, officials hoped to free McClure quickly. But they then discovered that the well was surrounded by rock. The rescuers' jackhammers were also inadequate, as they were designed for downward rather than horizontal drilling. Wow. Uh, some things going on over here. Panther Creek Wind Farm. Capricorn, what is this? Capricorn Ridge Wind Farm. Fort Concho. Fort Concho is a former United States Army installation located in San Angelo, Texas. It was established in November 1867 at the confluence of the Concho Rivers and on the Butterfield Overland Mail Route and Butterfield. Good Night Loving Trail. At its height during the American Indian Wars, Fort Concho consisted of 40 buildings on 40 acres of land leased by the U.S. Army. The fort was abandoned in June 1889 and fell into civilian hands. Over the next 20 years, its buildings were used as residences or recycled for their material in the nearby town of San Angelo. Beginning in the late 1920s, a serious effort has been made to preserve and restore Fort Concho by its eponymous museum organization, founded in 1929. The property has been owned and operated by the city of San Angelo since 1935. It was named a National Historic Landmark on the 4th of July 1961. Fort Concho is one of the best preserved examples of the military installations built by the U.S. Army in the state of Texas. Over its 22-year career as a U.S. Army base, Fort Concho housed elements of 15 U.S. Cavalry and Infantry regiments, most prominently the Buffalo Soldiers of the 9th and 10th Cavalry and 24th and 25th Infantry regiments. From its establishment in 1867 until 1875, Fort Concho was the principal base of the 4th Cavalry and then of the 10th Cavalry from 1875 to 1882. From 1878 to 1881, the fort was the headquarters of the short-lived, and troops stationed at Fort Concho participated in Ranald S. Mackenzie's 1872 summer campaign, the Red River War in 1874, and the Victorio Campaign of 1879 to 1880. Makes me think about the cowboy days, you know, and, and it, when in a time where there was nothing here. Nothing here. And for your security, you know, might have to ride over to Fort Concho. Just all the stuff that took place here in the past. It's crazy. Think about having to run around all this terrain on horseback in the old Western days. So that's over there to our left. So we'd have to ride way over there towards the horizon to get to Fort Concho. We were in trouble back in the day. Over to our right here. Here we are. So to our right and ahead still is leaving of Pecos. What is that? Leaving of Pecos was originally a camping place along the west bank of the Pecos River on the wagon road called the Lower Emigrant Road. Military Road or San Antonio El Paso Road in Texas. It was located 38 miles north of the Lancaster Crossing of the Pecos and 16 miles east of the first crossing of Escondido Creek. It was also located a mile north of where the Wagon Road had its junction with a cutoff to the north to the Wagon Road called the Between Fredericksburg, Texas and, now Fort Stockton, Texas, where it joined the Lower Emigrant Road. It was later a stopping place on the route of the San Antonio-San Diego mail line. Ah. Uh -huh. This where we could get our mail back in the day. Okay, so that is... from us. Here. Here's that Iran place. We we're talking about Iran, Texas. The Yates Oil Field. The Yates Oil Field is a giant oil field in the Permian Basin of West Texas. Primarily in extreme southeastern Pecos County, it also stretches under the Pecos River and partially into Crockett County. Iran, on the Pecos River and directly adjacent to the field, is the nearest town. 
the field has produced more than 1 billion barrels of oil, making it one of the largest in the United States, and in 1998 it remains productive, though at a diminished rate. Since fracking has exploded in the Permian Basin, the Yates field has seen very heavy activity in the past three years. Estimated recoverable reserves are still approximately 1 billion barrels, which represents approximately 50% of the original oil in place. Interesting. Canyon, come on, Canyon Ranch Railroad Eclipse Windmill. You know, we're going to be way, that's way out of our way, but... The Cannon Ranch Railroad Eclipse Windmill is a historic wind pump that was located near Sheffield, Texas. The windmill was built in 1898 and added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1977. It was one of only four known to exist and was the last one still situated above its original well. It was restored in 2001 by the nationally renowned windmill expert Jim Collins of Poteet, Texas, and his nephew, Wald Hagen James. In 2019, the windmill was moved to the National Ranching Heritage Center in Lubbock, Texas for additional restoration and permanent installation in the center's 27-acre historical park. It is one of few surviving railroad eclipse windmills, which were the largest commercially produced windmills in the U.S. and were used along railway routes in the southwest. This served as the primary source of water at the headquarters of the Cannon Ranch. At 22.5 feet in diameter, it is the largest size of windmill produced by the Eclipse Company. All right. Fourteen minutes after the hour. Yeah, what he said. Some days it still blows my mind that we can fly at all. But, you know, I just look at it and I'm like, okay. What a trip. <laughs> that you can make this tug float.
blanco a la espuma del mar. Azul y blanco en la espuma del mar. Azul y blanco en la espuma del mar. Check the news. <laughs> 20 minutes after the hour. Pause there for a minute. Ah, oh, for a quick little smoke break. Yeah, it looks like it's awful smoky outside. But yeah, 20 minutes after the hour, so I'd like to take a little uh get open the window. I don't mind. Um I am trying. I am trying, at least trying to quit. And cutting back and cutting back and cutting back. There's some days you'd be proud to know that don't smoke at all. And then, you know, like two weeks will go by and. But lately, you know, around the holidays, it's, you know, a little bit of stress. But again, nothing I want to go into. Everybody's got problems. I don't really need to hear any of mine. That's for sure. But anyway, if you are a smoker, I don't mind. I understand. Look at all these wonderful windows that we have in the plane. Right? And in our virtual plane, you you can open these. You can op open them. Yeah. So I've got a custom-built plane in my head. And we don't even have these formal seats. So when you're on one of my, you know, watching one of my streams, imagining you're flying along with me, you know, imagine that we don't have these seats. You can imagine whatever you want. You can have a a pole. We can around the, hang around the pole. You know? But I like to imagine couches. And again, we got windows that can roll down. There's going to be some ashtrays around. You know, some end tables and drink holders and USB ports. And maybe you'll have a couple of uh, video screens around here and there. In case you want to keep up on the news. Good Wi-Fi connection. Um, an area for snacks and drinks, whatever your heart desires, we have it. I'll get it. I'll fly to the other side of the world. Get you whatever you need. A place to, again, more little eating and drinking and possibly even a little, you know, emergency bathroom or some sort of thing in here. A little privacy curtain or something. You know, something. I mean, try to make it so it's not so long in between hops so that you could use the restroom wherever. But hey, you know, as I've gotten older, sometimes all of a sudden everything just goes from, no, I'm good, I'm good. I can make it to the next spot. To Hey, I need to go right now. I don't know what's going on with my body, but I need to go right now. We are making our way to this our uh, third or fourth cross country, and now going south. And um, we haven't really done Mexico before. Uh, we've been all over the United States pretty much, if not in small little cross country aviations in the airliners, you know, and zipping back and forth. But I feel like kind of getting good. I mean, there's always more stuff to see. And I really enjoy having this Bush Talk Radio 
keep me enthused about some of the things that we're seeing along the way. And yeah, I've been learning a lot. Been fantastic. But never really gone out of Mexico, and I thought, well, for role-playing purposes, we're going down to get some tamales and get in some trouble, that gastronomic trouble. Gonna try to avoid all the other kind of trouble. But I were, you know, big ancient aliens kind of person as well. You know, there's a lot of interesting things to see down this way. And um, it's got me thinking, you know, keep just keep going south. Let's not let Mexico be the place. Maybe we'll make our way down to Guatemala. And the, I guess that's where the ruins and the pyramids start getting way more interesting. As we start heading further and further south of Mexico City. But anyway, we'll just play it by ear. But anyway, we're right now, that's the goal. And we're headed to... Uh, we're headed to an airport. Which ICAO is 2TA9. And on the map, on the Sky Vector map anyway, get that over here. 2TA9. We're not, it's, we're, it's taking us close. We're almost on the, on the border. We'll be coming in and landing down here at this place that's got a cemetery. And then we'll try to find a job. See if we can actually find one that takes us into Mexico. If not, we'll um we can keep making our way down here. We don't actually need to There really doesn't seem to be any pyramids or ruins until you get down into here. But there might be something up here near Monterey. Is that what it's called? We'll have to look again on the, uh, by the way, we're going to be coming down here and cutting into Mexico here shortly. So we'll definitely be able to make it by the end of today's live stream. I can just turn right now. Well, actually, we're not, this one didn't show us where we're at, but we are. So today's flight to that spot is 200 and... 19 miles, and we have 76.3 miles to go. Uh, that probably puts us somewhere in here. Well, I'll, it shows us where we're at, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't uh, immediately know where our destination is. Rock Springs. Racketville. All right, let's go back to Sky Vector. There's Rock Springs over here. I don't see Bracketville anywhere. Bum, 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 bum. All right, well, anyway, that's where we're at. And another call coming in. Who are you? Hello? All right. 
can't say hello back in two seconds. You're not real. That caller is not real. All right, let's relax. Turn on the music. We still have uh, 69 miles to go. Yeah, open the windows.
you know, I see things in the ground that are just far out. Getting interesting. Fantastic terrain. I mean, it's like they were laid down perfect way to create those ridges. I mean, the way the trees are laid out. It's like things grow along these lines. It's, it's, wow, it's just really interesting. Wish I had some super giant construction equipment. And, uh,. An unlimited budget. Not to do any damage, but to like just really accentuate the curves around someplace and terraform. You know, a mesa and a valley. I mean, it all looks terraced to begin with, just the way things are laid out. I mean, the way the ground is, it looks terraced, like it was all messed with, it was all... You notice how, like, all the trees are on lines and... I'm thinking about pyramids, so basically what I'm thinking about the terraforming is really accentuating some of the, the land around here. In pyramid fashion, building giant neighborhoods that are all terraced. Fingerprints. 
tu cuerpo es un tesoro Vine buscando cobre pero encontré oro ¿Para qué te digo que no? Uh, maybe not as steep. Place that's got some nice, real low dips and high points. Create a little reservoir. Pretty good spot between those two points. whole interior this whole area here neat uh, every bit of this place I'm surprised I really am and this is really a trip I'll have to pay more attention as we head back to Colorado and move other places if you know are, am I just now seeing these kind of patterns in the ground, or is this just something? Uh oh. Don't freeze. Don't crash. I'm gonna turn up the terrain a little, a little bit more even. Pardon any uh, any lagging of the stream if I do anything like this. I wish I could turn it all up to ultra. Increase the shadows.
<laughs> somebody's been like it seems like somebody's been landing planes around here. Uh huh. That, that's what that looks like to me. That's that's somebody's airfield. Over to that farm. Short hop. Rain is just tripping me out. It's normal again over here. Wow. Well, it's definitely been a treat seeing this kind of interesting, interesting terrain. Each layer seems so clearly defined. Like terracing. It's like every inch at some point somebody came through and terraformed everything. No way. Nature, man. That's this whole area right here is really neat. Nice dips and valleys. Not too high peaks, but make a great complex. So yeah, I'd want to come out. I would want to come in here with equipment and, and terraform it so that every bit of it was just more accentuated. Not to take away, but to add, to really define all those lovely curves, clean them all up, and then to start to develop. I love developing things underground. I like reserving the ground level for nature mostly. I don't mind building up, but I really like building down. By the way, SimCity's got my brain thinking, you know? Oh, look at all of this. This is far out. Wow.
I <laughs> love it. Oh, nice. And then this nice long run. Gold waterway, yeah. So flat. That's nice. That run is awesome. So caught up in the landscape. Let's see how close we are now. We're eight miles from our destination. If we can call it in. If not, we'll just land. Two TA9. With the way's wind blowing, wind blowing is behind us. We want runway six. Wow, finally, it actually gave us one today. All right, turn off the autopilot. Lock yourself in for a minute. Well, you can do whatever you want. If you want to trust me landing with you on seat belted, you can go right ahead. All right. Okay, off. Get myself situated properly in my seat. Turn off the engine, basically. And we are on... Say we're on base. Dice que me 
I'm going to be with her. Huh? around here. Can't tell if that's a building down there or not. We are here. Let's go ahead and... Uh... Oh, my God. 
for your conditioner now. Transporter, disembarking of passengers can begin. All right. So uh, we are somewhere uh, close to the border. Between Texas and Mexico. I think that's basically it right there. Because there's Chihuahua. So I heard that there might be some interesting things to see over here, this side of Monterey in Mexico. Transporter from dispatch. Disembarkation completed. There Thank you. There could be some stuff over here. Mission. But again, it doesn't get exciting until we ready for engine start get down into here and over here is where yeah you know, Tewakan is supposed to be I think and I'm surprised I'm not seeing okay Kawaki. So there are some ruins there. Uh, I thought that the pyramids were right over here. Yeah, there's Teotihuacan right there. So there's one pyramid complex. So then we'll have to grab a map and see what others we can find. But again, it you know, look at the way that they now when you see the terrain out here in general, we've been flying around this really seemingly stratified terrain where every inch of the terrain looks like it was terraformed and then you can kind of understand looking at these structures here I mean how they just accentuated you know potentially accentuating what was there building in the same style as the uh, the way nature has built in general very stratified layers very sim city like I love it I love it I love it Okay, so we got paid for that job, and let's go back over to Neofly and see if there's anything taking us that away. Okay, jobs. Do that on this map. And then we start going through it. Let me put, uh, oh, we're set to 420 miles. That one's taking us straight south. You want well, it's going to take us right Monterey. Do, 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 do. Well, it should be right next to it. Look at this map again over here. Where we're at, and we are up here. Right here. But yeah, that's a long ways to go. But, okay. Pedro Negros. All right, so it's still much further south. So this is going to take us pretty much to 
There's Piedra Negras. Venus. Yeah, and there's Monterey. And this is taking us right where we really needed to go. Because if there's anything going on, it seems like, yeah, right in here. Going right to it. Right where we needed to go. Said I wanted to look on this side of Monterey in this area. And then we'll head south from there. Okay, so that's perfect. So let's take this job here. Let's check, make sure we check our fuel this time so I don't run out like last time. And hopefully that will still allow us to get that job. Yep. What is this job? Passenger? No. Bring 2,280 pounds of magazines to Valle del Rosario Airport and good it doesn't look like it has a time limit on it we don't want that so we need 2,286 pounds minimum good day to you pilot the flight plan has now been signed off as soon as all the cargo is safely on board you can get on your way transporter loading has started stand by Neofly should really make it. It should auto-adjust your weight. When they drop that in there, it should add that weight. $2,180. There's two, three, four, three. All right. Okay, pilot. That's the last of the crate secured, and the cargo door is closed and latched. You are cleared to taxi. Okay. So now let's plug that in. We want um, VRO. See if this Garmin has got it in there. R O. Yep, Vela de Rosario. That's exactly what we want. Let's quickly check elevations. Do a scan. And let's change our flight plan. UTA 9. RO. Doesn't know where VRO is. It's okay. Wipe that. Put it in ourselves, basically. Um. Oh no. Really thing? No, I don't want this point anymore. I'm trying to get this third out of here. See they have a delete. Doesn't want to That's more like 
the direction we're going. Either way, at least the GPS has it in there. So let's make sure that that, again, is going the right direction. Yep. Yep, yep. We can put a little bit more fuel in. All right, let me get the music back on. Let's get out of here. I forgot to do. I'll put that up all the way. Okay, pilot. Steady away. See you again soon.
All right. Uh, let me get our. Okay, that's still set, right? All right. Aging autopilot. Keep doing a flight level change. Turn on nav. Beyond. Nav. And double check it here. Here we are. Flaps up all the way. Taxi let off. Commercial separator, probably don't need it on with this height. Devil's River. Devil's River Ranch. We're on our way. 17 minutes after the hour, I'm going to turn up the music a little bit more. Put us into kickback mode again. We have 207 miles. Señoras y señores, bienvenidos a Miami International Airport. Compromiso. Bienvenido a Miami. Bienvenido a Miami. bailar con esta música en Miami eh, ¿Qué más digo? Bienvenido a Miami Con queso Bienvenido Con queso I'm requesting Charlie Airspace clearance we are cleared through the Charlie airspace. Charlie owns a lot of airspace. Como el aguardiente. Caliente. 
Ah, we've got an Air Force base. Surprised we haven't had to do clearance to, uh, and I didn't adjust our flight plan, not go through it. But requesting plan trend, uh, blip, 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 requesting class D transition. Texas. Lachlan AFB, the largest pilot training base in the U.S. Air Force, is home to the 47th Flying Training Wing of the Air Education and Training Command. On weekdays, the airfield sees more takeoffs and landings than any other airport in the country. ATC reactivated the 3,645th Pilot Training Wing at Lachlan in October 1961 to prepare for the phase-in of students and T-37 and T-33 trainers. The 4,080th SW continued at Lachlan as a tenant organization until 1963. Today, aircraft flown at Lachlan include the T-6A Texan II, the T-38C Talon, and T-1A Jayhawk. 15 classes of approximately 20 to 25 pilots graduate annually. I'll be darned. Twenty-five minutes after the hour. We missed the smoke break at the twenty minute mark. So if you got him. Una morena le tapa la cena y una gordita, qué rica, ando una nica, 
pero tiene más flow Federica. Yo le doy pam pam con la pipa. Déjale la jale, me grita, ey. Pasa la juca, trago se cruza. Nunca la agarra la tos, ey. Es de la usa, mata la tusa. Después nos vamos los dos, ey. Si tiene celo, yo no la pelo. Yo nunca ando precoz. Se hace muy tarde, sale con hambre. Después nos vamos por el taco veloz. Velas, vamos a fumarnos un blon. Vamos a quemarnos los dos. Juanita que me grita, voy a hacer, voy a hacer, voy a hacer todo lo que tú mandes. Ambos chiri y diamante lo que yo quiero. Se lo meto en la cuchara de mate ser. La cubanita que me grita, voy a hacer. I'll try it up there. Después de una noche dice que me quiere. Oh yeah. Vamos a fumarnos un blow. Vamos a gozarlo los dos. Prendelo, fumalo, háralo. Esto es fácil cuando saben quién tú eres. ¿Quién tú eres? Llego en la nave y me bajo pa' que yo pele. Con un bate que se la saco a Roger Clemens. Llévatela, Dime, quieto. manito, ¿qué pasó? Ya todo el mundo se alteró. Aquí de una se formó cuando en la disco entró yo. Dímelo, baby. Dime, baby, vamos a ver. Por los leggings se te nota y aquí hay mucho pa' aprender. Vamos a fumarnos un blon. Uno nada más. Vamos a quemarnos los dos. Ajá. Juanita que me grita, voy a hacer. Voy a hacer. Voy a hacer todo lo que tú mandes. Ambos chiri, diamante, lo que yo quiero. Se lo meto en la que ustedes maten ser. La cubanita que me grita, voy a hacer. Después de una noche dice que me quiere. Oh, yeah. Vamos a fumarnos un blow. Vamos a gozarlo los dos. Absolutely loving the landscape as we're heading south towards Mexico. Really, really, really am enjoying it. Seven on the altimeter. And 
there it is. Crazy. It's like it it's like magnets almost. I don't know, just the way it's all the way it all stratifies, if that's the right word. Everything's on its own layer. Everything's so perfectly delineated. That's just so freaking fantastic. You know, and I don't even, I, I imagine that you can still appreciate it on the ground as things rise up in the uh, terrain. But from the air, wow.
Mm-hmm. The music seemed appropriate for heading down to Mexico. Good tune.
Yeah. <laughs> 44 minutes after the hour. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Getting us the Sky Dude here. A Sky Dude. Not the, you know what I mean? Sky Dude. One of many. Making my way from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Down into Mexico territory. Going to be getting my, uh, going to be getting my uh, Junior Indiana Jones on as we look for some pyramids and quest for some good virtual tamales. Mm -hmm. Make yourself at home. You're the VIP on the flight. Whatever you want. Loving the terrain as we've been heading this away. I love all the patterns. It's hypnotic. It's amazing. Starting to make out some mountains, well, uh, hills, mountains up ahead. Might have to check Sky Vector to make sure we're gonna be all right. It, uh, probably not. 5,000? We're probably gonna have to climb. Might as well look now. Plan ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing we're down in here in the threes, so we're good at five. Here it goes to seven three, and then this range seven two, eight two, nine six, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen thousand feet up ahead, huh? Oh, I hate taking us up, I'm getting away from all the detail down here. But well, it's not that much higher, I suppose. Go to our console here, our alt. This dial is uh, controlling this setting over here. So I'm trying to keep this screen in view. Sorry. This dial controls this number over here. So I'm now rotating. Uh, it will be. There we go. Rotating the knob to the right. I'm gonna raise that up to 13. Now the plane doesn't automatically in autopilot react to the change. We're just dialing it in comfortably, and then we'll tell it when to initiate the change and try climbing. Might have to make an adjustment on the prop. Yeah, it's taking some dialing here. And there's 13.5, and hopefully that should be higher than anything that we've seen out there. I've seen 13.2. Oh. Okay. So now, if we want to make it start climbing, then let me put the prop back up all the way. Conditioner up. Um, you can either dial in a vertical speed change and pitch the nose up to whatever angle you want. Or you can hit the flight level change button here, which will try its best. Usually, unless you got a strong wind, usually does a pretty good job. We'll try that, and if not, we'll use vertical speed. 
that button and use this dial to pitch the nose up. But hitting flight level change, we've got enough power going, so the plane is acceler uh it's climbing, it's begun to climb. And it is it was doing six hundred a minute ago. One hundred feet per minute. One fifty, two hundred feet per minute. So it's, you know, taking a sweet time about thinking about it. All right, but we've got plenty of power and speed. So we have, I don't know, like 60 knots that we can bleed off if we want to. That going too slow. So again, let's use our vertical speed now to force it to pitch the nose up. So we'll do vertical speed over here, press, okay. You'll see right at the moment, it's a zero feet per minute. All right, we're going to change that with every click. In this case, we're going to be rolling the dial down for up. I'm going to roll it one notch. There's 100 feet per minute. There's 200 feet per minute. 300 feet per minute. And you're going to be noticing that we're going to be dropping speed. But nothing major. We're not even getting a solid bar. This little bar, little purple bar that is going up and down right here indicates where we'll be like in the next 10, 20, 30 seconds. So right now, even pitching up at 300 feet per minute, we're not really bleeding off a whole lot of speed. All right, go back over here, roll it another two or three. It was 500 feet per minute. And at this speed and full throttle, yeah, we're starting to bleed off some speed, but not much. And we've got a wind at six, eight knots variable pushing us pushing us from our right side over here the wind pushing us sideways all right still not losing a whole lot of speed we're up to only 5,600 feet let's go a little bit more extreme Here's 1,200 feet per minute. As long as we don't lose too too, too much speed, making the X spot out of climb, we're all right. You know, still bleeding off speed. We're still gonna keep coming down. If it gets under a hundred. I'll drop the nose back down. We'll just roll that knob up one or two notches.
I think it's almost a, such a shame to see things done in a grid pattern when the landscape is so curvy and wonderful. You know, you'd almost want to see all the... Almost. Kind of want to see things designed along the same way. But... More convenient for delivering mail. Helicopters flying overhead so low that I'm feeling it in my toes There's a helicopter right above me I can feel it in my chest now. He's that low flying overhead. There he goes moving away now Adios Now he's still close enough. I'm still feeling him Or what he's hovering around here for Yeah, getting close to that hundred knot mark. Oh, holding right above it. Ten thousand feet. All right, I'm gonna drop the nose just a notch. Thousand feet per minute. Still maintaining a good climb, but. Picking up a little bit of speed, or at least, at least holding, or going up or down. According to the computer, Thousand feet. Now the wind is kind of hitting us from this angle in this quadrant. A 30 knot wind is pushing against us. That 
That's a heavy wind, man. That's a fuel killer. You see it starting to level out? There we go, 3-5. All right, let me uh, bring the conditioner back a little bit. Try to... That is a, like a mixture. Kind of go back into cruise mode. Build up some speed, but... All right, so just building our speed back up. We've reached 13,000 feet. from 13,000 feet. not wind has got everything mighty dusty right at the moment I can imagine that these, the taller peaks, definitely areas of importance. I mean, for you to be able to see forever how important strategically some of these high points would be. I mean, you really did definitely get a different vantage point perspective. So those are the ones, the highest that we're seeing, around 13,000 out there. So I didn't know if there was going to be any directly in front of us, but according to the map, I just wanted to be high enough uh, that if we end up near any of them that we'd be okay
Is that an exhaust that's trying to? I got a graph, a graph, a graphical glitch going on. We picked up an alien, or it's trying to do a heat blur, and it's graphically glitching. That's interesting. Yeah, it's supposed to be doing a heat blur. That's interesting. Never seen that one before. We have a separator. Now that's just exhaust. Oh well, how interesting. half tank and we're almost there we have 71 miles to go and the sun is starting to go down so that's as far as we're going to make it into mexico hey we've made it into mexico though so hey tamales are on me tonight well whatever you want to eat you might not be in the tamales but i i man to seek out and find tamales because you know, all chilies from areas and the way people pro make it, and it can all be very, very different. So the, the search for the perfect tamale continues tomorrow. Plus, we're going to be searching for some pyramids. Going to be heading down to Teotihuacan. Just east of Mexico City. I don't know that we'll be able to make it all the way tomorrow. That's quite a jump. But either way, hey, you're with me. It's all good. And have a good time. Exploring Mexico together. I can't wait till we get, we haven't really done Mexico. We haven't really done, you know, I normally stick around Colorado. But we actually have traversed the United States pretty good now. I mean, we've been kind of to all four corners. So it'll be interesting in the next, uh, this next year to start going to other places. South America, well, can't wait to get to Europe. I haven't loaded any of that stuff because didn't have, hadn't have, bleh, bleh, bleh. it had no intentions of flying over there, but it's getting to be about that time. We have advanced now in our pilot career to where we're just not, I'm not you know, I'm doing more and more and more cross countries now. Everything prior to this was has been learning and, and just pretty much sticking around Colorado Springs. Just learning how to fly and learning how to read maps and navigate and blah, 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 blah. So I haven't been very adventurous. But again, we've uh, graduated to the point where we've crossed the United States now a couple of times. And in the airliners, we've definitely been going back and forth. Alaska and Canada is going to be really interesting. We On this one, we might just keep going south. Way down to Patagonia or something. It's so weird, that blur. That's the El Chipotle. Chipotle. El Chipotle. El Chipotle. I'm not coming all the way down to Mexico to eat it out at Chip Chipotle's. Rancho Aqua Buena Airport. Good water. Good water ranch. Like that.
Far out. You ever had menudo? Menudo? That's the way that the we gringos say it. Menudo. Menudo? Oh man. With the tripe? And the idea kind of freaked me out as a kid. But, you know. Then you eat it. I know some people still, that just the taste of tripe. The consistency. And I, in cooking, I'm always looking for different consistencies that you know so that is just a, another amazing consistency or whatever the, the way it, it's chewy you know it's got to be cleaned right and cooked right but holy moly that's good stuff I haven't had tripe a million ways yet. Everybody's like, eh, you gotta try it this way and this way and this way. I haven't done that yet. Mario Vitali was even doing like Italian cooking with it. Wow, good stuff. That's such an interesting basin right there. Or, you know, whatever you call that kind of formation where there's ridges around and then this giant depression in the middle. I love the shape of these things. It's been such interesting terrain. This has really, really opened my eyes. I thought this was going to be rather boring, you know, and it's far from it. Eventually, I find something absolutely beautiful in the terrain, no matter where we're at. Hello, FX Nico. I see that you've created an one two months ago Gangnam Gangnam styled style load it down slowed down I can't even read my, my eyes Gangnam style slowed down 75% and then I see the toys it looks like a toy over there 
Delta 384 getting ready for takeoff. Morning routine stream for fun, far out. Not real guardian angel. Make a story in the comments. People make a story about this in the comments. It's like you've landed in on an alien planet. Looking at uh, FX Nico's channel. Open topo map. There's that one that we just passed. Guess that would be it up here. So getting ready to fly into this area right here. Wow. Everybody's like, this is it. This is the place. Not that place over there or those places. This. This is going to be a place. Seven miles. Call it in if we can. Last one, we'll take it. Eight would be better. Thirty-six miles north, thirteen thousand five hundred feet inbound to land runway eight. But right. Sounds nice. Yeah. 
Hey, it's 420. Cheers and thanks for tuning in. We're 31 miles away from our current destination. You get paid another uh, chunk of money. We are now officially in Mexico. I'm glad you brought your sombrero. You're going to need it. So I'm picking up dinner wherever we're landing. I'm on the hunt for good tamales. You can have whatever you want. Barbecue, I'm sure that's fantastic down here. Sure, everything's fantastic down here. Well, not everything. There's crappy cooks everywhere. But finding the gems, you know? Very into cooking. Well, very into food, you know. <laughs> More into eating, of course. But I do love cooking. Cooking techniques. I would definitely say I'm a foodie. Not as obsessive as some, but... You know, I love cooking, and I love learning about cooking theory, and Melliard, and flavor profiling, and balancing, and... I'd say I'm a little bit s step up from, you know, just an average cook. I watch a lot. The wife is uh, Christine. She's way, way more of a foodie cook person. And she's got the baking stuff down. Starting to slowly get into a little bit of mixology. I don't really drink much, though. My liver says thank you. Um, yeah, so I don't really drink too much. But with the holidays, I've actually been like... And try to, you know, make mixed drinks and actually flavor balancing those too. I had a Jack and Coke the other night that, you know, didn't matter how much Coke I had in there, the Jack Daniels was just, holy crap, man. I'm here. I'm here and you're going to know I'm here. And boy, with every sip, it was like, yeah, I know you're there. All right. So a little dash of sugar, a little dash of salt, neutralize that Jack Daniels butt. I mean, some people, hey, if you love the flavor of whiskey, hey, right on. There's a point where it's just too much, you know? So I'm like, ah, oh, I'll take what I learned from cooking here and throw a little bit of this and throw a little bit of that and enhance the sweet, kill that, the bitter, and kapow! It worked, and I had a nice smooth Jack and Coke at that point. With no, just took, took, took the bitter top right off of it. I mean, that's... That's the way to drink uh, Jack and Coke. So from now on out, yeah, every time I order or make a Jack and Coke, little pinch of salt, little pinch of sugar. If you don't believe me, try it. And I'm not kidding. Try it just a pinch. A pinch. You don't have to go crazy at all. That's the whole beauty of flavor balancing as I'm, you know, as I'm learning. Start out small. I didn't want to change the, the nature of the drink so much. I just wanted to see if just a touch here and a touch there could do it. And yeah. At least that's the way my my taste buds experience things. Mm. Yeah, so it's 4.20 in the afternoon. We're a little past 4.20 now. Let me um get my final smoke in of the day on. Smoke of the day done. Then I'm actually off to the kitchen here. We've got household duties to do. Domestic kind of guy. And um not sure what it's gonna be tonight. It's either gonna be a meatloaf or it's gonna be meatballs and a pasta. But I've got this really interesting way I'm thinking about preparing the meat meatloaf. Instead of just like one giant chunk or like small little meatloaf. I want to try a high a high heat braise on them. 
and then get a nice pepper, green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper sauce on them. Really, that, really love that flavor of the peppers. So there's our airport, 14 miles. Uh, I should have pulled this up a lot earlier. And I'm really sorry I didn't. Um, but Sky Vector, I don't think, actually has that airport. I was going to say I was going to pull up the airport information, but we would have to go to a different application to get the Mexico airports. But we're called in at least. And we have clearance to land. They know we're coming. Yeah, and the terrain down here has been blowing my mind. It's always wonderful when you have not flat. But at the same time, as we've been moving throughout here, it's been very gentle rolling, but the patterns in the ground are just have been unbelievable. And we've lost a lot of that as we're moving into here. But I mean, you can still kind of see it. I mean, look at these lovely patterns. But earlier in the flight, you back up like an hour. Holy moly, man. Every inch of the ground is patterned. Next Valley. So we'll pick it up tomorrow from here. We're going to spend the night in here in this town. And then we'll keep heading south into Mexico and do a quest for some pyramid pyramids and some more imaginary Mexican food. Again, uh, I'll pick up the tab. All right, let's drop out of autopilot and just let it come down. Just kill the engine. And just let the thing start coming down. Don't want to overspeed. Lift the nose up a little bit. But we are descending rapidly. Where did my music station go? I'm trying to find them. I've got so many darn windows open. There. Uh, I've lost my music window. Where did you go, man? There it is.
<laughs> I like that gong at the end. Not very Mexican, but very cool. That that was our fusion. Up. All right. Guys didn't have to come out here to meet us. No big deal. Oh. Tell me I forgot to turn on my uh, taxi light. Let's get it shut down here. <laughs> Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Getting paid. That's the sound of getting paid. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. Far out. And that was... We're back over 10 million. On board. So, made a nice little chunk of money two hops today and made our way down into Mexico. We're good. All right. Let's turn off our avionics here. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. So welcome to Mexico. Stretch, stretch. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have to talk to this guy and find out where the, you know, where some good food around here is. I don't see much. 
gonna have to be some really good food. There's, there's got to be a dwelling around here somewhere. I mean, why put an airport here? So, hopefully, somebody's mom can <laughs> can cook real good around here. Rosario, it's her air, it's her airport. Is that a house? No, just shadow on the ground. Eh, yeah, there's some buildings over here. Okay. Yeah, so there are there are some places we can uh, probably get something. Get a headache. All right. You just have to, they're just very small people. You have to get really small. Then we can get into those buildings over there. They don't have those fully fleshed out. I get it. Can't have, I mean, everything. Okay, so. That concludes today's flight. Again, we'll pick it up tomorrow. So thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Any places in Mexico that you want us to go to, Cancun or Cabo, whatever. If you have any interest in it at all, let me know. So this was episode 92. Cross country south too. Colorado to Mexico, we are officially here. I think this was this one's gonna be extended. I think we're gonna just keep going south. Maybe down to Patagonia or something. You know, we'll see. Alright. Asta Manana Bio Concarni.
Contarme esta noche contigo 